How you doing, Jax? I'm doing great. Great. A lot, of good, a lot of good stuff going on. Got to tell you. Fan girl, boy, there's some people joining up in here. Welcome if you're just joining. We got oh, another yeah, great see you. Guest. So, spy camera. Is that going to be something to do with you? <laughs> what you doing? I, might be. Okay. Well, well we got to we got to take the long road to get there. I hate to tell you that. Hey, I'm we, ready. Hey, we got some page, we got some pages to go through and I, I apologize to everyone at the start, but I'll be as brief as I can. Oh, we you don't, got we're, not, we're not going to cover every aspect of this, but uh, oh. we got to we got to lay the foundation. I think he's saying he's going to come back then. I think that was a, a thing to say, and he could come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can we can get it covered. We, we'll okay. we'll get there. <laughs> okay, you go right ahead, and I'll share the screen whenever you're ready. And I'm going to mute myself and and cover the camera so I can smoke a cigarette. But I am here. Okay. Well, we're first going to start out way back in uh, 2006, and uh, this. I got prompted by this, uh, as uh, many people know, we've been doing the readings at uh, foul play and uh, the readings started at the pretrial level and uh, continuing forward. So in going back and rereading this stuff, it, uh, it's really turned a, a real new spin for me, uh, after all this time and after everything that we've really learned, uh, you know, the last 18 months, uh, it's really made a difference. And I look at the case differently than I did then. I, I'm sure everybody does probably but rereading this old stuff at, uh, wow, the connections. Anyway, the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, let me pull it up here. It's going to be application. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, we're starting out, uh, in July, uh, July. Do you want me to make it full screen? I'm sorry. Do you want me to make it full screen like this? You, you, you can't. You can't. Okay, there we go. Is that must be easier for them? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Jax. That's okay. That's okay. So we're I, I, I'm showing this so everybody understands the date that, because the date is somewhat important. It's not key, but it's somewhat important. So um, the first person that we're going to be uh, talking about, actually the first two, are the two reporters, uh, Emily Matasic and uh, Jennifer Colvis. And Emily Matesik, as you can see here, uh, she started off being cross-examined by, uh, or on direct by Fallon, and then goes into the cross by Strang. And I I'm going to move forward. I'm just going to get Strang's. Let me get the page number here. I'm just going to do Strang's part of it because it's really the same. It's kind of a repeat, so there's no need in going through it twice. So, okay. I don't know what page we're going to. Okay. I did that wrong. Sorry about that. Everybody understands that around here. <laughs> Let's see if this is it. Still not it. Well. Let me look at my page numbers again here. Hold on. I'll feel, I apologize. Uh, Go right ahead, Jax. I'll just talk until you get your stuff together there. That's fine. doesn't bother me a bit. They all know. When is a little bit disorganized to get organized. Okay, and here we go. Yes. Here you go. Here we, here we go. So basically what, what's going on here is that um, – uh, um, Emily Matasic and uh, Jennifer Colbas were state witnesses. And so the cross-examination uh, is done secondary. So uh, w what they're trying to find out, and there's actually a couple of things going on. Not only are they trying to uh, get to the down low of how each uh, of these reporters came up with the idea of, of uh, interviewing Avery. Uh, there's also the uh, actual uh, tape itself. It's a this thirty-minute tape that Emily Matasek did. They they can't seem to really find for some reason because she only she only did excerpts for her, her five-part excerpts for to to be broadcast. The actual oh, wow. raw the actual raw footage. 
who knows where that sucker's at so because they tried to get it and they as far as i know they never did but anyway so uh he's she's going he's going through and, and trying to elicit from her how she came up with the idea of uh doing this and she goes through and says well basically that you know they were thinking about uh interviewing avery would be a good story and so um uh let's see here you can see right here where she says uh your belief is that on november 11th you were chatting with one or more of your co-workers whatever it was the case had been going on for a couple of weeks uh, at that point do you recall that she says yes and uh by that you mean the public awareness of the disappearance of teresa hallbach so he's trying to also drive her to say hey what exactly were you after in, in, in interviewing avery now you know we didn't he didn't know it at the time i guess or maybe he didn't i don't know but as we've come to find out emily matasek really thinks he's guilty I mean, she, to me she does i mean everything that i read about her so but anyway at the time i, I don't really know uh, what she was thinking in her mind or what you know people that she worked with were thinking um so let's move to this next part here that i want to talk about uh that would be page okay let's see if this is what i'm looking for i wish i could do this just click click and you go right yeah, to the page it doesn't work that way well at least you get to share a poor jinx he couldn't even do it i felt bad yeah, i love this screen share it's actually yeah. really cool. i went too far so basically now what they're trying to drive down to is when you uh how did you get into c this is another part of this whole thing how did you actually get into c avery because uh i'll get to this part in a minute but um he was trying to find out how did you actually get in with a camera your cameraman to interview avery in the jail and there's another reason i'm doing it this way as well so uh it come to find out she had called and talked to someone and they said well you know yeah you can interview him but you know you're gonna have to come down here and, and pass a note to him and we'll get we'll take it and, and give it to him and if he agrees uh if he says yes then you can come in and do your interview so that's what she did mm -hmm. her, and her, her and her cameraman drove down there and that's the, she talked to this uh, uh john Byrne. he is the jail administrator and so of course he took this back and uh this note back and he gave it to her another part of this is trying to drive down the room and i'm going to get to that part also and i'll cover this a little bit less with the jennifer colbas but this particular room uh, and understanding uh how jail visits are done and they you know i'm sure each jail has their own policy cali met's no different so uh, let's see here let me find the part that i wanted here we go so uh, let's see here <clears throat> All right, describe the room for us. Very small room. There's just a small table on either, either two or three chairs. All right, was there any, how many doors were there? There were two doors. Any windows in the room, to the room? Both doors had windows. All right, and in terms of the walls, any windows there? No. Okay, uh, let's see here. Who arrived in the room first, you or, and your cameraman or did Mr. Avery? Mr. Avery was sitting there when we walked in. And there was some other stuff that happened before this. It's really unimportant. The room is what matters. Uh, when he was sitting there, was he uh, any conversation that you recall between yourself and Mr. Avery prior to going on camera? Again, this is alluding to that tape, that this full raw footage that they have never come up with for whatever reason. And she said, I just recall some small talk, hello, that sort of thing. All right, in your meeting with Mr. Avery at that time, did he give you indication of whatever, whatsoever, that he did not want to participate in such an interview and she says no as you recall now thinking back on uh, that moment can you describe his demeanor for us just he was relaxed and he was just kind of sitting there okay and who else was in the room the photographer there was um uh, was there any member of the calumet county sheriff's jail department in the room with you as you were setting up to conduct this interview and she says i believe that there was when they walked us in I don't remember how long they were in there 
by where we're setting up. But uh, obviously, once they got in there and got settled, uh, the the officers that escorted them in left the room. So, um, but they also, as you can see, all right, in terms of windows and doors previously described uh, in the doors, were there any members of the sheriff's department uh, posted outside of the doors? She said, yes. All right, which doors? Uh, or both doors? And she said, I believe there were uh, both doors. One was behind me, so I couldn't see that one. Okay, all right. Prior to engaging in a discussion with Mr. Avery, did you or, or your cameraman, and that being him in your presence, have any discussions with any member of Calumet County Sheriff's Department regarding the nature of your interview? No. And that, there's a lot of that questioning goes on. Fallon did the same thing, trying to make sure that nobody spoke to her and told her what to say, not like kind of, what subject to bring up, that kind of thing. Um, so you, it goes on here. Anyone suggest you what to talk about? Even the time limit. And that that's that's another part of this, too, um, that we'll get to. And then she said they were there probably between 20 and 30 minutes. So they go on at some length here. And it's just a really kind of drive down and drive out extraneous information. He's trying to get to the, the guts of that room, who was in it. How long they were there? Did anybody ask any questions? And, you know, and just as importantly, how did you get the interview? How did you get into that room? Because uh, this becomes important later, uh, I guess somewhat important. Um, so let's see here, my next section here that I want to move to. Um, okay, where are we at here? Let's see. Okay. I've tried to top this in here better this time so I don't go 9 million miles past where I need to be. Let's see. Okay, there was another interview that uh, Emily Matasek did, and she wanted to do an, uh, another. This was a letter date. This date that uh, this original date was November 12th. So this was only just a few days after Avery was arrested, okay? So um, this is at a later date. She wants to re-interview him again in December, but she's going to have to go through a different process. And so she she says, well, what about a telephone interview, I guess? And they said, well, you know, you can, you can uh, fax a request uh, or bring it down, whatever it was. And... Um, so that's how the, the second interview becomes also important because it got challenged uh, because what she did, she took the, she took or faxed this, this letter uh, down to the jail and uh, they took it, they took it to Avery. And basically the note said that he, she would like to talk to him again, gave her or gave him her number and to call, call her collect if he wanted to talk. Hmm. And he did. And he did. Right. So it, it, it becomes this, did he solicit, solicit this call? And he didn't. It was an unsolicited call because she initiated it. Right. She, and that's it, when where she's so rude, correct? Uh, I don't remember the, that exact that exact phone call, but I think you're correct. It's been a long time since I've listened to it. Yeah. So, Pretty sure uh, it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see here if there's anything else on this page. I want to get to interview Sheriff Pago for your awareness. Hallbach reported missing. Um, and she had testified, she testifies that she had only been to the jail once before in the sheriff's office once before. So basically she's trying to find out, you know, do you really know these people? Right. And she, she indicated a, that she had met them, but that's about it. Um, let's see. And he talks to her about the jail layout, the security doors. Uh, there's a big security door. Yeah. And there's a bulletproof window there when you first go in at the, at the receptionist. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. After I get down with this section here, we'll see if there's any questions at all. We yeah, I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on the chat here. But yeah, right now I, they're kind of... I don't have anything. I don't have any of that chat stuff open. I'm just kind of go through, trying to go through here to make yeah, sure that I'm, not, I'm not skipping anything. Um, 
yeah, I think that's it for that section there. I think that probably pretty well covers. Um, let's see here. Ouch. Okay, I, I've got down page, pages 697 and 698. Well, there must be something here. Yeah, I think I pretty well covered that. She's talking. He's talking about the the deputy being at uh, each end of the door, somebody standing guard. And this this is another thing that kind of becomes a little bit important because mm -hmm. of what comes up later. Yeah, with the, with the, uh, one of the other witnesses that we're going to talk about. Um, I don't like this Emily Metasis anyway. I don't Robert. like her either. I don't <laughs> I, like her either. She was I, a she had him guilty the minute she heard his name. I think. She's just well, rude I, in the way she talks. I think she did because she also had a blog, if I remember correctly. She oh, really? A, yeah, she had a blog. Yeah, I, I got into a couple of rackets with her. I didn't mess too much time with her, but um, yeah, she she was just uh, to me. She just came off as rude and really more than a reporter because she she inserted an opinion into it, not just reporting. Yeah, the news, yeah, you know, reporting, you know, being an investigative reporter, and she added Wasn't her, bias. Little, yeah, she didn't sort of her little twist to, to it. Okay, so I'm going to skip down to this. I think we're pretty much done with her. We're going to skip down to this next one. Okay, uh, this is uh, Jennifer Colbus. Okay, uh, another nice person. Uh, I, you know, I really don't remember her. I, and I, she, I think to. she's that dark haired one, the kind of younger one with the glasses. That sounds right. And yeah. I did. I did do a little look. To I mean, she kind of asked good questions and stuff, but she always looked at. She always looked at him like, hmm, hmm. Yeah. you know, like she was always suspicious, but never said anything, you know. Right. Well, I mean, uh, this one here. This is on direct with Fallon. I just go ahead and go through it, and we'll we'll get to it. Uh, just okay. You go right just, ahead. Just to cover cover again. Basically, uh, he he just gets through her, her employment. She's a reporter with. Uh, she was Channel Five in Green, out of Green Bay, mm -hmm. and um, how long she'd been there and that kind of thing. General assignment reporter. So, uh, directing your attention to November, December of the year two thousand five, starting first with November. Did you have an opportunity to interview an individual by the name of Stephen Avery? Yes. And with respect to Mr. Avery, tell us where that interview took place in the Calumet County Jail. She says, "Do you recall the date of your first interview with Mr. Avery?" Yes, it was November 18th. And see, again, here we are nine days after he's arrested. So and yes. we, get the, we got a camera inside the jail, okay, inside his you know, interviewing him in his face. Yeah. Describe us, if you will, how that interview came to be. On the morning of November 18th, the colleague came at Canada Jail from my apartment, and I asked them what visiting hours were at the jail and what information did you receive in response to that request. She says, a woman, the woman who answered the phone told me uh, were specific days and times. I don't recall what she said. However, it differed from what I had heard from other reporters who I work with. Interesting. Uh, so at that point, yeah, I, I questioned, I questioned <laughs> her further, and she asked if I would like to speak to the supervisor. I'll stop right there just for a second. But what the hell has she heard from her? You know, other other reporters like as open season, they had no better than that, because any of them that had been around there for a while had to know that. They are, there are different interview times and days for men and women. They mm -hmm. didn't allow they didn't allow a mix of, of that type yeah. of interview. Right. And we'll get more into that. All right. And did you, in fact, speak to the supervisor? Yes, I did. He transferred me to Jerm Burns. And before I get into that, my question would be to you, uh, did you identify yourself as a news reporter during this first conversation with that woman? Now, yes, I did. All right. And did you indicate for the reason for your in inquiry? Yes. All right. And the best you can recall, what did you tell the person who answered the phone in the terms of the reason for your inquiry at the, uh, as to the visiting hours? I said that I would like to interview Stephen Avery in the jail. All right. Subsequent to this woman answering the phone, you indicated you spoke with the supervisor. And she had, she had to repeat it. You, spoke, you did speak to the supervisor after? Yes. After I talked to that woman. All right. And who do you speak? And with whom do you speak? John Burns. Now, John Burns is the jail administrator. He, okay. runs, he runs the jail. All right. We'll get more. We'll get deep into this guy. Okay. You're going to love this. It's a new name for me. I haven't, I, I don't think I've heard it. You know, I had, read, 
I read all this stuff before, but when I, I came across this and I, and then I was doing the reading, I'm yeah. like, wait, oh, what? Wait, hold yeah. On. You get a, you get a different perspective on oh, it again. huh? Totally different. Okay. And what did you ask Mr. Burns? Well, again, I told him I'm a reporter and I wanted to see if I could do an interview with Steve Avery and I asked him how I could go about doing that. All right. And what instructions were you given? He said, I could write, I could mail a letter to Stephen Avery. That was one option. All right. And the, any other options? Yes. I, in fact, said, well, I was trying to see if I could do an interview with him, interview with him that day. And I said, uh, and he said, I could write a letter and hand deliver it uh, to the jail. Uh, just ask for John Burns when I got, <laughs> when I got there and he would hand deliver the letter to Stephen Avery. Again, this goes back to, I guess they were instructed any, any request or messages they were told to deliver to, to Avery at this oh. time, at, at least at this time that changes later. Yeah. All right. And in, and did you in fact hand deliver uh, uh, such a letter? And she says, yes, I did. At this particular point, you know, if that letter still exists, and she says she don't let's see. Um, all right. Then tell us what happened uh, specifically when you arrived at the sheriff's department. And again, now I'm not going to go through this again, because it's the same, it's basically the same thing as with uh, Emily Matasek. Uh, she goes in and, uh, you know, they have to show identification and all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, then they're, they're escorted back to uh, a room. And so let me just see my next page here that I want to get to. I want to get too far off into that. Uh, seven fits. Okay. So we're almost there. It's right here. Basically, it's page seven, seven, 19. Um, and it, it was just a plain room, a small table, small plain room. And there were some doors, uh, some windows on the doors. So I could see the guards through both sides, I believe, uh, as we were talking to Stephen. And how many doors were in the room? Two. So that's enough for that. It's basically the same thing as we just talked about. Right. The They're other. just describing an introvert view of room where. Right. Yeah. Again. Well, not only the interview room. It's a yeah contact, right? It's a contact room, but where there are guards outside the doors. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to get a little bit more into that too. Let's see here about Jennifer. I think there's one more page. Base basically when we get to, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can key this up here and we'll get that to it. Um. Same thing. Did you have any discussion with uh, the, the sheriff's department regarding the nature and content of the interview? And she says, no. And this is, I guess, when they were leaving. Were there any requests made for copies of the video or audio or parts of that interview? And she says, no. Um, your best recollection is she did a second interview on December 14th. Tell us how that interview came to pass. And she said, that interview, I had not contacted the jail until that morning. I said in our afternoon news meeting that I would like to try talking to Stephen Avery again. And our staff agreed that I should try. And we just, my photographer and I, again, same photographer, just drove to the jail. They, she just drove down there. And again, once again, I hand wrote a letter. And when I got to the jail, I asked for John Burns. And he came out. And once again, he took the letter back to Stephen Avery. And he, they, Avery agreed to the interview. Mm-hmm. So basically the same thing. I'm not going to go through that process. We're done with describing all that stuff. So let's, uh, uh, is there any questions anybody has? Have you seen anything? Come um, I've, I've seen a couple. Let me see if I can grab them. Yeah, for, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep this next page up and then we'll. Okay. You do that. And I'll get to some questions. I if I can find them right here. Thank you. Okay. That's, I know it's way up. You're probably going to go way up. Uh, maybe there was just more comments and and oh, um, lickety, um, snickum. So, yep, yeah, yep. I think that's how you yep. say it. She said, Angel, Angelette, Anjanette Levy, Angelette, Levy. Angelette Levy. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Is there a reporter with the glasses that seemed questioned some of the goings on? Yes, okay, that rings a bell now. Thank yes. you for setting us straight on that. <laughs> okay, because let me see. Um, what was the name of the one who said, Stephen, what do you want to say? Anybody's listening? Oh, that's, I don't remember that reporter's name. Um, she's the one with the blonde hair. Um, I'm kind sure of well-known. I'm pretty sure huh? that was Jennifer Colbus. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was her. Because she had told, 
Uh, she, I didn't read it that part, but it's, I mean, anybody wants to read, this is the full pretrial and anybody can see, you can get this off of Stephen. It says actually Linda linked it. It's in the description. Yeah. This, this document. So anybody that wants to go pull it up and look at it and uh, you can easily find it uh, back there. She, she basically has said that uh, this Jennifer Colba says she's that she didn't want to, she wasn't trying to convict Avery on TV. She just wanted to do, to get his side of the story, basically. She seemed at least somewhat impartial anyway, best I could tell. Far more impartial than uh, Emily Matesic. Well, now, the easy lady says, I'm sure there were cameras in the room. Well, mm. we're not there yet. <laughs> but, well, we travel some more ground. Yeah, here we go. I don't see really any questions. I just see people making comments about the reporters and, you know, who was doing this. And who was doing that? Oh, um, Nan's Nan's life says, "Don't forget about reporter Tom, Kurt, Kurt, Kurtzer. I gosh, K E R T S C H E R. Okay, who who was uh, conveniently on the phone with S A when L A arrested him and had the balls to ask if he'd hand his phone over to them so they could speak to <laughs> L A." <laughs> oh gosh that's crazy it is oh lordy okay all right yeah, go ahead Jackson. I, I don't remember that guy but <laughs> dang <laughs> i don't either okay she also so, was so. the one interviewed tp <laughs> the photography it was tp oh uh tom peterson tom pierce, tom pierce. yeah pierce yeah. okay yep yeah. all right Okay, so okay. let's move on to uh, John Byrne. Now, John Byrne is uh, the guy that uh, Emily Matasek and Jennifer Colbus gave these letters, these notes to, to take back to Avery. Again, this is a pretty long. I'm not going to read all of his stuff. We are going to cover several pages, though. So I'm going to read this first part to kind of get an introduction to who he is, um, and then we'll move on from there. So this is now... Uh, this is a defense witness. They are the ones that subpoenaed him. He wasn't the state. Okay. So, so he starts the direct am examination by string. So, Mr. Burns, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, per you're presently employed. I'm a jail administrator for Calumet County. Uh, that's my present position. All right, jail administrator, meaning you have general responsibility for all facets of the operation of the Calumet County Jail. That's correct. Uh, you report directly to Sheriff Hoggle. Yes. Uh, but anyone who actually works in the jail reports to you. Correct. In addition to being a jail administrator, you remain a sworn officer of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department. He says yes. In that department, you presently hold the rank of lieutenant. Uh, he says correct, yes. And how long have you been in the position of the uh, jail administrator for the Calumet County uh, for Calumet County? It's been four years. Now that's important. <clears throat> that's important right there. Four years. Four years. So it's okay. two thousand. It's the middle of two thousand six. So he's been there since the middle, of, at least the middle of two thousand two, right? Right. Okay. Continuously. Oh. This is important too. Yes, continuously. So for that period, let's say November 9, two thousand five, through the end of December two thousand five, you're the jail administrator. Correct. Uh, did you bring with you today any documents? And he did bring some documents. Um, and we're going to go through a, a little bit of them. Uh, okay. I'm not going to read again. I'm not going to read them all. Right. I, I, any, anyone that's interested, interested I, you know, in, in the rest of what I'm going to tell you and show you, because mm -hmm. some of the stuff I'm going to show you is not that old. It's not this old. It's newer than this. So and we'll get to it. I but don't I care. Had, There's a lot of newbies coming. They don't hear. They don't see it. This stuff is really refreshing me. And some of it I've never even heard. So. I'm I mean, totally enjoying it. <laughs> well, like I said, I, I remember reading this stuff. It, it's been so long ago. Um, it's it's good to go back and read read this yep. stuff now, though. It so, sure is. Anyway, um, let's see. Let me look at my notes here, that because I wrote this guy's got a big old long damn list of stuff that I wrote about. <laughs> okay, sixty-four. It's funny how some of the people that I've never heard of really have a lot in written, you know, in writing about them. Well, it's it is because these are uh, you know these are kind of, the, kind of the nuts and bolts of people that just you know they run the right. they run the operation and you right. don't really think about them too much because they're not a, a Ken Kratz or, or a Fallon or right. one of the big hitters, but they still have an impact. Oh yeah, 
So uh, this page and the next page, I'm going to read, and then we'll move okay. on. Okay. Okay. Thank in. you very much. I have several questions about this. You've given me three pages stapled together, uh, but the first two are 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 uh, first two are two sided. That is, they're, they're typing on both sides. Yes. All right. Uh, there. Uh, this is an excerpt out of a larger book of jail rules and regulations. This is important. Yes. Uh, but there are all these rules relating to visitation. These are all rules relating to visitation. And he answers yes. These rules are, were in effect in this form during the period of, of November and December of 2005. Yes. For ease of reference, that's the time frame I'm going to uh, use here. That is 60, 61 days here, unless I tell you otherwise. All right. Okay. Uh, did you bring any more than one copy today? No, that's the only copy I brought. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to give this back to you. I think what we'll do is mark this as an exhibit. Uh, okay, we're going to move on from that. Uh, I want to be careful about this, uh, Mr. Burns, because although I, I uh, accept what you said, that these rules were are unchanged uh, and they were in effect as you have been given to me in this Exhibit 7 in November and December of 2005, that last page looks to me like that it says it was approved on March 24th. 2006. And he says, okay, that's correct. Uh, many of the policies that I personally worked on, um, I set them for an annual review. I take a look at the policy and determine if there needs to be any changes. Uh, when I checked my history document, the previous changes to the visitation policy was made in 2003. So this policy, although it was examined and reviewed within the past year, it was unchanged. Great. Thank you. Okay, Attorney Strang. Uh, okay, he's going to offer that to uh, offer the exhibit with explanation. Any objection? No. Okay, we'll move on from that. Uh, very quickly, introduce the to the court, if you would, um, to the command structure within the Calumet County Jail uh, during the time frame we're interested in. We'll do a little bit more about this, and then we'll move on. The head of the department, uh, of course, this is John Burns answering. The head of the department, of course, uh, is the sheriff. Uh, I report to the captain. Captain Paul Rush, and underneath me would be one sergeant and then our corrections officers. Uh, Attorney Strang, uh, should we push? Okay, I don't care about that. Um, so when you say one sergeant, there's not one per shift. There is only one sergeant uh, of the jail and one position, he says, yes. Okay, and that's the daytime position. He answers yes, daytime, evening generally would uh, works 9.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. That's a great shift. Uh, great work if you can get it, right, Linda? Yeah, I'm no kidding. In the morning, <laughs> five the afternoon. That's right. <laughs> hell yeah. Top notch job. Hell yeah, that's right. You're in the know. Good, good work if you can get it. Yeah. And, and, general, uh, yeah. <laughs> and your general hours are what? 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, okay. Uh, so he is then in charge of the jail from 2 p.m. to 5.30, roughly. Correct. Right. Okay, so they go on to talk a little bit about shifts. We're not going to cover you more of that. So we got the basic jail. Uh, who's in charge? Right. Yep. Okay, so let's move on here. So let's break it down. <laughs> yeah, you broke it down. Now put it together. <laughs> I've got 768 and 769 written down here. So let's take a look at them right quick. Okay. Okay. Okay, he's talking about here basically how many people they have in the jail during their day. And basically it's about staffing because if they have trial and that kind of thing or mm -hmm. other other there's other things. Uh, about having extra people for transport. That's right. What I'm not going to cover too much about that. Um, also, members of the public have access to the inmates. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Almost self obviously members of the public do not have access to the inmates other than on the terms, under the control of yourself and the people working in the jail. He says, correct. And uh, question, when, when I say members of the public, uh, members of the public. That would include lawyers for inmates. He says, yes. Okay. Now we're getting to some of the meat of it. Question, religious advisors or chaplains, that type of thing, who may wish to see the inmates? 
And he says, yes. Alcoholic Anonymous counselors, those kinds of people, yes. <laughs> Family members, yes. Friends of inmates, yes. And even law enforcement officers, yes. They would gain access to an inmate in the jail, that is, law enforcement officers would through you or your correction staff. Correct, he says. That said, there are different, different rules that apply to some of these different groups I have described, correct? Yes. Let's start with lawyers and clergy members. And I think that we can uh, we can group in probation parole, parole agents uh, there as well, correct? Yes. And there's a specific rule that applies to the three groups that I've just described. And this goes back to the rule book that he brought in that exhibit that he entered. And he says, yes, their access will be permitted uh, to the inmate for lawyers, clergy, clergy members, probation, parole officers during reasonable hours. And again, reasonable, that's, we'll get into that a little bit. And he says, yes, you ultimately decide um, what those reasonable hours are. And he says, yes, reasonable hours would not include during shift changes. Correct. It would not include when you're trying to serve meals. Correct. That is, you as a jail administrator are responsible for the care, feeding, and the safekeeping of inmates in your custody. Yes. Uh, moving visitors or dealing with visitors distracts from or requires manpower, I guess, uh, to put it another way, right? Yes. So he talks about shift chains and, you know, um, uh, juggling professional yeah. visitors. You know, if they've got people in there, uh, like a lawyer talking to an inmate during the shift change, if it's been a re if it's a reasonable, if they haven't been been there just a reasonable time, they probably won't make the lawyer leave. That's what right. he's that's what he's alluding to. Uh, right. However, however, um, uh, visitors uh, like family and stuff they're not allowed, uh, and friends they're not allowed. Or if they're there, you know, if there's going to be a shift change showing up, they run them off. So wow, yeah, they 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 just don't allow it because they want to wow. get they want to get the you know the prisoner back in their cell, the defendant back in their cell. And right. that kind of thing. Well, so they don't have to worry probably, about it. Probably yeah. one sergeant per whole jail. <laughs> Cindy well, says one I mean, sergeant they, per whole jail should be one per shift. <laughs> well, I mean, they have a sergeant, but they also have just jailers that work there too. They usually have a couple. Sometimes they have four or five. It just depends on the day and how many how many people they have in there. So and they're allowed they have part timers that they're allowed to call in. They it's kind of a um you know, they try to keep that to a minimum. And he talks about that a little bit, but I'm not gonna go into all that. Um Let's see here. What were we? Uh, okay, he talks about holding a meal, holding a meal for an inmate if he's talking with someone, you know, like a preacher or counselor or whatever. And he says yes under certain conditions. Um, let's see here. Generally not important inmate. Uh, this goes back to reasonableness that we talked about. Now that's in his rule book that he's written. Um, so we're talking, and generally, the visitors, even the professional visitors we have described, would avoid meal times and shift changes. And he says, if we can, obviously, we just talked about that. Uh, other than that, do you expect advance notice from, let's say, an inmate's lawyer? He said we prefer it, but again, we understand schedule schedules, and sometimes they drop in, and, and you know they try to accommodate. Um, Okay, he talked about the rules in Exhibit 7. Uh, let's see here what this says here. I want to make sure I cover it. Law enforcement are not covered, especially in terms of their visits with inmates. In these rules, Exhibit 7, correct? And he says, I don't believe so. There again, though, a law enforcement officer would, ha uh, would, have, contact, uh, would have to contact you or someone working for the jail to arrange a visit. He says, yes. Uh, lawyers, probation, he goes back into that. There's, these are called, this is really important. This part right here, the contact visit, because there's two separate types of visit. And we're going to get into that now just here real, real soon. And Exhibit 7 reversed that a little bit um, obliquely in paragraph. What is it? Uh, see, he says it's 29 point whatever there. Um, he says, uh, by identifying the two visiting rooms that may be used by clergy, lawyers, probation agents. Yes. And those are called contact visit rooms. Correct. By contact visits, that means there's no barrier separating the inmate from the visitor. Correct. No need to use a telephone to speak through through a barrier. Correct. Law enforcement officers are also permitted to contact visits. Yes. Uh, he gets into that a lot. Uh, can, can go for reasonable hours. Um, let's see here. I wanted to get into this other part. Yeah, he's talking about clergy members, same thing. Um, Daisy, 
Any questions before I, while I'm stopped right here? Um, it says, uh, uh, let me see. Friends and family visitation is at very designated uh, designated days, times, depending on the block the inmates are in, is very structured and in a totally different area from attorney and clergy visits. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't see, I don't, if I miss any, let me see. Okay. Never understood. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, okay. Uh, when we step away from law enforcement officers, inmates, lawyers, clergy members, and probation agents supervising the inmate, and we get into family members, friends of the inmate, the rules are different. Yes, there are more rules. There are structured hours that they can that they can visit, yes, and rules limiting the amount of uh, friends that can visit. Rules limiting the length of visit, yes. In the case uh, of your jail, 20 minutes. That seems pretty damn short to me. God, yeah, that's not long. Yes, 20 minutes. So that's all they get to visit on whatever visiting day day there is. And there's no limit on length of time of a lawyer's visit or a clergy member's visit um, uh, other than reasonableness. Again, correct. Uh, so you've got this. You've got this uh, visiting schedule for friends and family members set up Thursday and Sunday. So Thursday and Sunday, 20 minutes at a whack. So 40 minutes a week. Man, that's that is terrible, especially if you have to drive far. I mean, yeah. you know, because a yeah. lot of it is far away, you know. Absolutely. Throughout the country, you know. So, yeah. And this, yeah, this gets in the females from a certain time, male inmates certain times, and he says right. yes. Um, these, are, these are not contact visits. No. Uh, at least ordinarily. Uh, ordinarily, it's a non-contact visit through the phone and a uh, glass barrier. Oh, reinforced, wow. reinforced glass barrier. Yes. Yeah. And those visits are routinely are tape recorded by the jail. Yes. Hmm. Contact visits are or are not tape recorded by the jail. Not. They are not recorded. Contact visits. 22. Are not. 20. Just not at all. No. There is no recording device I'm aware of in there. Okay, and you would know. Now, this guy's been there for four years. I would hope so. So <laughs> let me get to my notes here. Let's see if there's anything else we need to cover for Mr. John Burns, because that's that's pretty shocking, really. Yeah, yeah. They're they're not recorded. Not recorded. So we go. not recorded. Right. Okay. Uh, well, then that brings up a lot of questions, if you ask me, because I seem to think that didn't they come across a recording of? Oh, uh, we're gonna get to that. Oh gosh, you're getting me going. Ah, hurry up! No, like, it's like I want to know what you know. Because this guy, I've never really heard nothing about this guy, and and they're depending on this one guy who is in charge of this. He's been there four years. He should know what goes on. Absolutely, so, he should know yeah. everything. Just freaking jail. Yeah. Yep, he, exactly. Poggle runs the county, but this guy runs the jail. He's there every day. Poggle He's the, the head of Hancho Wool. He is the is head that what Colburn was too then? No, no, he was a, a guard in a prison. He was a right? jailer. Yeah, yeah he okay, would be okay. yeah, he would be somebody like um like one of this guy's jailers that just watches. Oh, that just give out meals or let him go to the yeah. what, you know, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So let's see here. I've got a bunch of pages wrote for him. I don't want to spend way too much time because we got a lot to, lot to cover here. Um, Go right we're, in. we're about 45 minutes. I don't want to eat into the, 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 the ladies' times. Okay, well, they, they'll be here about 4 30. So, okay. so, 776. I've got a bunch of pages wrote for this son of a okay. Let's move on down here. This says 789. Let me let me just scan here, see first, make sure there's nothing I'm missing that's important. Okay, um. Yeah, this is a little bit important because this is where we get into the, the, the these interviews that uh, Emily Matasic and Jennifer Kolbas did. Okay. So just talking about these logs uh, in the in this part about um, um, they keep a jail log and it's I and mean, it's not extremely detailed, but they they really kind of tell what goes on in the jail. Per defendant, if there's phone calls and it, just anything extraordinary. Behavioral things. Well, that's a different thing, but yes. Oh, okay. That, that, okay. Well, it's, it's still also kept in a log. 
Okay. Uh, so pretty much anything that has to do with the uh, with a prisoner or defendant. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They they generally log it. Okay. Um, so she's telling us uh, in this particular log, he's talking about Sheriff Pago Call, and he states, "If the media wants to interview Avery, we can allow them to do so, right?" And she's uh, he says yes. Avery refers to Stephen Avery. Yes. If Avery wants to talk to them, right? Correct. Uh, this can occur in the court in the conference in the conference room in the jail, right? Yes, that's the contact room. Uh, we're to make sure uh, all the media logs in. Uh, yes. Okay. Make sure that uh, we get the TV station. Okay, and all that camera camera. Uh, they get they have to be identified and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and what this runs into is that. Um, what happens, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of break this a little bit down. Um, Loy, uh, and, uh, the, uh, Loy and Johnson, that's, that was his, uh, Avery's first attorney. Right, first attorney. Yeah. They had really put the law, they had kind of really talked to Fagel, and they really pulled him aside and said, look, we don't want this guy talking to the media. Can you put a stop to it? But and, and Fagel kind of agreed, but he, you know, he, I guess he kind of stepped back, and I, I I well, say probably this. wanted him to talk, talk, talk. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. He also <laughs> says, you know, he's got a right to talk, and it's the right to speak. He's got a right to speak if he wants to. So right. he's, he's kind of playing this uh, double-edged double uh, place here. Um, but basically what the the lawyers wanted was if somebody comes and wants to talk this to, to him, that they're to give uh, uh, whoever comes to ask or, or to get the lawyer's names and go through them. But obviously that didn't happen. So um, let's see here. <clears throat> Apparently there was a couple of calls in this one day, and this is the day that Emily Matasek uh, came, uh, that, that her first interview. Mm -hmm. um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, and they're talking about, you know, if they needed help, they're going back again about need help and talking about labor costs and all that. I'm not going to cover that anymore. Um, well, he's still now you got to remember, he's now he's still talking to this jail administrator, John Byrne. Let's talk about okay. that. What's unusual prior to November 12th, 2005. Now, you got to remember, this guy's been there for how many years? 27 Four years. years. 20, well, he's been an employee of 27 years of the case. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. So, but yeah, four years in the jail. Yeah. Uh, prior to November 12, 2005, during your entire tenure as jail administrator of the Calumet County Jail, can you recall one on one occasion on which a TV camera crew interviewed an inmate of the jail in the jail? I couldn't give a specific. Not one comes to mind. Not offhand. And probably there probably hadn't been any at all. That I, you know, I don't know that. But uh, he would probably remember, and I'm, I'm going to guess that Beauty and String probably would, would have known by, I'm going to guess they would have known by, by that time. But anyway, uh, how long have you been with the Calumet County Sheriff's Department? 27 years. So basically in his 27 years, do you remember any other inmate, uh, and I don't need a name, but do you remember any other inmate who has attracted as much media attention as Stephen Avery? No. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else have I got to cover on this page here? T1 says you remind him of a cowboy. <laughs> T1 wants a nut, I tell you what. <laughs> he says, he said, JJ's voice makes me want to dip in, spew wee, spit and tink. <laughs> right. You got him hard, T1. You go for it. That's funny. And everybody's talking about boudoir photography. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I did that stuff way back in the day. It was way before 2005. So it was popular. It just probably wasn't something that was advertised because it was something that was done in people's homes. Yeah, so, it's, it's yeah, true. It's just what you know, but yeah. yeah, I'm here to tell you, I used to do it. So I did it for about four years. So along with wedding photography and people and kids and dogs and in people's houses, people's cars, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much anything, you know, people get in yeah. front of camera, People pay know, big money to have their car with them, you know, dressed up, that, standing in front of it. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, yeah, they love that car. 
got a little bit more down here. Let's see. Okay. I don't want to pass it up. Yep, you're right, Carla. You didn't want to. Uh, she didn't want to do that one wedding because uh, Ryan was there. You're right. Exactly right. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder about the relationship, right? It, yeah. Well, yeah. And you're right. Uh, Lickety Snickum. I like that name. That's kind of cute. And actually, I even said it right. <laughs> I think, didn't I? She, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. yeah um, she's she's very right i mean it wasn't advertised but it was around you know it just wasn't something i mean it wasn't that people were stuck up about it or nothing like that i don't think i just don't think you i mean i advertised it when you know but it was like way at the bottom of the card or if i knew somebody you know that's how we did it <laughs> word of mouth sure yeah pretty much it wasn't like you know uh uh, you know, let's put it all across the window and say, hey, let's we'll go to your room. You get half naked and I'll take your snapping pictures of you and your husband <laughs> right. or just you for your husband. That's most, mainly the ones I did. But right. No. Still. You know, it uh, it's sure. just crazy. I'm sorry right. if I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. Okay, I, you, I found my place. You gave me time to find where I was what I wanted to get out here. So use my name. <laughs> <laughs> um He's talking about the, these uh, uh, again contact visits, uh, and he's he had basically said that you know he's they considered the media a professional uh, type visit, so they allowed the contact visit and not through the not through the barrier. So anyway, let's just drive on here. We allow uh, the conversations in private. When a lawyer visits for professional visit contact visit, it would not be practice to have one even one corrections officer standing outside the door, would it? Mm -hmm. And John Burns, John Burns says no, let alone two, no. So this having a corrections officer uh, outside the door was an improvised procedure here to be uh, used with the media, media interviews of uh, Mr. Avery. It was a decision based on everyone's safety. And that decision was Sheriff Poggles. And he says, yes. The interview room itself was uh, used here. Are you familiar with it? He says, yes. It, and uh, Strength says it has uh, what I would call an alien floor tile, uh, tile floor. Uh, that's correct. The hallway through which the visitor comes and goes, slain with uh, tile, correct. The hallway through which the inmate passes into the other door, the second door, is it poured concrete floor? Uh, he says, well, there's some sort of covering on it, but yeah, it, it's a hard surface. Uh, okay, the two doors, this visiting room are heavy metal security doors, yes. With security glass, yes. They are not flush with the floor. That's floor, that's key right there. And John, Burns, yeah, they're not flush with the floor. These doors do not, these doors that go to these contacts. You can like see under them. You can hear under them too. Oh, okay. That's what he's getting. That's what he's driving to. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm yeah. yeah kind of he, says no. he says no. And uh, strength says that is there's a gap of about an inch or something under each of those doors or because uh, he's been there. He knows he says probably yes. Uh, one of the standing one standing within a couple of feet of those doors can hear without relative ease what people are saying in a normal conversation uh, tone inside that visiting room. It's not been my experience. I disagree. No, you could not hear if you're standing at the door when what people are saying in a normal conversation tone in the interview room. John Burns says, I don't believe so. As I said, I did stand outside the door during one of the media interviews and I couldn't hear the conversations. He says it all. No. I may have heard some of the noise, but it wasn't to the point where I could understand the words. Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, I guess it depends on your hearing. Well, yeah. What are you hearing? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. If you're, I mean, you still can listen to it. You know what? I've been in those kind of buildings before, and the way they're built and stuff make them echo, you know, pretty much automatic. Well, you so think I'm sure hardwood, you could hear it. With a hardwood floor, with hard floors. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's those hard rubbery floors. Like, you know you how buildings are back, uh, especially back then. There's nothing going to deaden it. I mean, no, they ain't got like a soundproof room. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, yeah. I got a bunch of pages outlined here for him, but I don't know that we need to cover. There is one thing that I do need to cover before we move too far past this, so. Okay. Uh, just do, you do your thing. I'm all ears. I'm just I like, I just don't understand how they don't think that, they, you know, you couldn't hear under that. Even by, if you're standing outside the door, you could hear. I, sure. would think, I would think if so. If it's quiet, 
you know, maybe if you're in a very, if you're in the center of the jail and there's p people making a bunch of echoing noises or a door or something where but I'm pretty sure they weren't. I'm pretty sure they were in quiet hallways, you know? Right. So, yeah. Well, the, the thing that, uh, I don't see it here. I'm sure it's on one of these pages, but again, anybody wants to go read it can and they can, I'm sure they'll find it, read street right. testimony. But uh, one of the things that's, um, that's in here that I wanted to talk about is that each defendant has what's called a jail jacket. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's basically, um, each uh, defendant that's in a cell, uh, the jailers, they all have access to this jacket. The jacket contains special information. Okay. Every one of them or any, any jailer can, can see it and read it. And, uh, like for whatever, of course, Avery's had specifically right on the front, right on the outside that any media that were, that contacted, uh, uh, Avery to contact, the, they were to be sent to his lawyer, but that didn't happen. It, well, it, it didn't happen in the beginning at least. So they all knew it. They just didn't follow it. And I, you know, this is the thing with Pagel that he says that, you know, he had a right to speak and that kind of thing. And I'm not going to get all into that. Kind right. Of thing. Um, here they get, they get back into this CD or DVD, um, talking about, they couldn't find it. And I guess they've even sent off to the parent company where I think they were located in New York of this television station that Emily Matasek worked at trying to find this raw footage. And to my knowledge, they never got it. It just while disappeared. They, well, why they need it, you know, I don't really know. I, I guess it doesn't really matter, but, um, but you never know what could have been on there either. Well, it, it, something. It, it was the entire interview. It was everything that that cameraman got, which probably was, you know, 25, 30 minutes worth of stuff. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to be, I'm just going to say, we're going to be done with, uh, Mr. Burns. So everybody okay. kind of gets a, a, the impression of what goes on at the jail how the two reporters at least got in there and this jailer and his responsibility. And right. uh, so and what he said, what he said, and, like, and, and, and what he said, yeah, that's, that's really important. What he said. Yes, exactly. What he said is important. And I caught a few things that you said, pay attention to, and I'm, I'm on Ab it. I'm paying attention. Absolutely. So let's do this here. I guess I need to unshare that. Da screen. Daisy land wants to kind of, you want me to unshare it? Yes, I'm sure of that one. Okay. Daisy Land wants to know if that was the same kind of room that um, I'm trying to find. Um, that Buting, the same room that uh, video surfaced with Buting talking to SA. Isn't well, listen, that the listen, same kind of room? Let's just drive on down the road and see what we find. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to say no, but let's just. Let's, let's move on. Yeah, let's move <laughs> keep on. A, keep it rolling. Okay. I'm going to share a screen, and this is going to be a Chrome tab. And we're going to go to here. Okay. 2000, we're moving on to 2013. And uh, again, I'm not going to read all of this, but, uh, but we'll get into it a little bit. Avery did this himself. He filed this motion um, on his own. Uh, <laughs> I kind of have to tip my hat at him because you know, this guy's got a really low IQ. So, Okay. For him, for him to do this, it, uh, damn. <laughs> I mean, because it's, it's uh, he's got a lot of stuff in here that I, you know, he probably had help, but man. But uh, he filed it. He filed this motion, and it's he filed it on several uh, several key things, uh, and that you can go through here and read them. Uh, uh, you did. I know you linked the uh, the uh, Google yep. Drive folder. Yep. I, sure I, I, wanted, did. I want to give a shout out to Ups, and my. Yep, my my moderators are putting it out right now. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Seeking Truth for Good. Oh my gosh, yes. She, By the she, way, she, she she's the one that foiled this. This stuff got posted publicly last year on Reddit, um, and yeah, you know, I, I, a lot of us found it really interesting. But um, you know, let's let's just move on here and, and see what we can find. Uh, what page is it? Right to confer in private. This is one of the things he hit on right here. Argument. Every was denied his right under Article 1, uh, I guess that's Section 7 of the Wisconsin Constitution, Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution to counsel. 
legal standards of the right to confer in private. Article 1, Section 7, the Sixth Amendment uh, protects the integrity of the never sale system. Let me blow that up a little bit. Everybody can see that okay, I hope. You yeah. see that okay, Linda? Perfect. Okay. Um, it provides the integrity of the ever sale system, criminal justice, by ensuring that all persons accused of crimes have access to effective counsel for their defense. The right is grounded in the uh, presumed inability of a defendant to make informed choices about his preparation and con conduct of his defense. And it goes on, and, and I'm not going to read it all. Again, you can go read it. I don't want to bore everybody to tears. It's a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo, but <laughs> it's important. I mean, he he cites we all know about it. Yeah, yeah he, he cites several cases. It's uh, actually pretty interesting what he oh, did. Yeah. Uh, let's see what I need to move to. Um, Everybody say a prayer for seeking truth because she's not feeling well because she's going to be one of my guests. So I just want to say hi to her in case yeah. she's listening. Thank you for all you do. You're very, very much appreciated. I hope she's feeling better. Mm -hmm, me too. Let's see here. Okay, I think it's down here. He goes on, he talks about several different things, so, and he cites several cases, but he also uh, says fashioning a remedy, and these are case, this came from case law. Uh, is un, it is fortunate that in this instance that the Wisconsin case re, uh, retains reference to one of the most cited cases that gets guidance to the issue of remedy and, and the concurrence of state versus Hoyt, and read all that there. Uh, there's no way to isolate the prejudice resulting from eavesdropping activity such as this. If prosecution gained information which aided in the preparation of its case, that information would be available in the second trial as well as, as, well as it was the first, right? They'd already know about it, so they can use it again. Yeah. If the defendant's right to private consultation has been inter interfered with once, that interference is applicable in the second trial as the first. And if the, if the investigating officers and the prosecution know that the most severe consequence which can follow from their violation of one of the most valuable rights of the defendant is that they will have to try his case twice, it can hardly be supposed that the serious the, that they will be seriously deterred from indulging in this very simple and convenient method of obtaining evidence and the knowledge of the defendant's uh, trial strategy. So he covered that pretty well. Yeah. So uh, let's move back here. I'm going to go to a different doctor. We're going to close that one. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if we're going to have to come back to it or not, but I don't think we do. So let's move on. And um, let's see where we need to go to. It is interesting in that, and I'm not going to pull it back up, but it is interesting in this, in that particular, um, this motion that he filed. He also filed um, about the RAV, the RAV4. Okay. When they hauled it away from Avery Salvage Yard. They oh. Didn't, they didn't tape the doors with evidence tape, tape, tape and sealed. They didn't. Tape ah. Sealed. <laughs> they didn't. That is something. They should have. Yeah, well, yeah. I they mean, didn't. they didn't. That's like protocol wonder we, why because from where there was no blood you know there was no yeah. blood on the back and fast bender yeah. standing right there and you can't see it yeah you know uh, yep. mm. that was yeah. actually a good catch i didn't i'd never really thought about that till i read this here or read it somewhere i don't i mean i've seen this several yeah months. i'm sure you've seen it a lot uh, you know they, they didn't they did not seal that rab up and they should have anyway yeah, yeah they should have um let's move on let's see legal standard we talked about that okay let's move on here so this next one i'm going to pull up this is a a a, a, a document that's uh to uh jerome Buting and uh um, dean strang from yeah. conrad Betts. bless his heart he, he left us uh didn't survive but uh, really liked that guy he was their investigator so basically he had to go to the jail and you can see the date here this is july 20th of 2006 he had to go to see um steve at the jail and he goes through the procedure here i'm not going to read all that um anyway i guess he was told he would have to interview uh avery in uh, the uh, through the phone uh, the jail officer was a very large man in uniform 
uh, but return short time later to me. See, he's up here. I'm sorry, I skipped the part. Uh, he's telling me he would have to enter him in, into the visitor's room. The phones are clearly marked that all conversations were recorded. At the time, the jail officer uh, asked how long the interview would take, and I advised him that I would be there less than five minutes since I could not discuss anything over a recorded line in those security conditions. The jail officer, a very large man in uniform, left but returned a short time later and took me to an interview room. Let me blow it up a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is the same room where I had previously interviewed Mr. Avery while in company of Mr. Strain and Mr. Buting. As the jail officer was exiting, he turned and stated, you know everything here is recorded. So anything said is at your own peril. What? Really? Yeah, you hear that, guys? At your say own. that again. <laughs> 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 at your own peril. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, this was a, that was, a, I thought that was an interesting little thing included in his. Okay. Now, as everybody knows, if everybody remembers, or at least the old, older timers, newer, newer people may not know, uh, Jerry Buting went to visit Avery. Um, we'll pull it up here. I'll blow this one up here too. Uh, that's too big. Jerry Buting went to visit Avery uh, on, uh, 321, okay, March 21st. So they hadn't been on the case very long. It's 2006. Right. They hadn't been on the case very long, but Attorney String was observed. This is a jail um, printout, or whatever, in case of. Attorney okay. Buting was observed by uh, 702, 705, 709, 714, those jail officers, uh, taking a video camera. This is a really good one, too taking a jail uh, a camera out of his briefcase to, vi uh, to visit video Stephen Avery. The phone call was made to 801, which is Foggle. Uh, he stated, we are to advise Buting is unable to video Avery uh, per 801. When entering the, uh, the conference room, uh, number, number one, Buting was advised by 714. He was not allowed to videotape uh, Buting, and he said, okay. So let's move on over here to... This is, I believe, this is from Buting here. I mean, from Poggle. Agree, Jinx. It is excessive for officers observing. Yeah, it is excessive. It is, but they yeah. did a lot of excessive to Stephen, actually. Okay, this is, uh, let's see, this is the one I want. Yeah. So this is from Poggle. Uh, corrections personnel, this is some, something from uh, Poggle, effective immediately. Uh, any uh, anytime Mr. Stringer or Mr. Buting visit their client, Stephen Avery, they are to be checked for any type of recording devices uh, or other contraband not authorized by me. On today's date, Mr. Buting brought a video camera into the visiting room in his briefcase, which was detected on security camera by jail staff. On security camera by jail staff. On okay. security What's camera. security camera on staff? What security camera? That's right. Well, now, now there's, there's a couple of issues, and we can talk about this here in a minute, but to me, a security camera is just exactly what it says. It's a camera to watch. Yeah, not, and, and not, it's not you're not seeing it. And not to record. Right. You're just watching. You're not recording. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's what it is to me. I mean, if they're monitoring to see if something's if they're know. monitoring yes exactly i think the key word there is monitoring because they, when you say security camera to me it could be recording you in, unless there are people to set and record it but it says right there by by several jailers i mean you know? I, I guess it's i guess it's a you know it's i guess it's all how we think about it i just think about it on terms if if um you know a lawyer is going to see um a, a defendant in jail is there some reason to record that meeting or is there yeah, something? There, there shouldn't be. It's I against mean, his, his civil rights, correct? I mean, to, well, they have to tell them. They have to tell them they're being recorded. I mean, as far as I know, they have to be told they're being recorded. Now, well, a, yeah. A security, so camera, a security camera to me is that they're, they've got it in there to help monitor the situation. In, so case, in case he went ballistic and was going to try to kill his lawyer or something. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, 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 that's me right there. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what I think of too. So, yeah. So, uh, basically, this is uh, him saying, he's basically admitting that there's a camera in there. To me, it is. So, we'll we'll drop that one and let's move on here to where I need to go. So, we can kind of make sense and kind of keep an eye on time. We're, 
I'm clocking in. I'm going to keep cutting it tight. I'm hurrying. <laughs> You're doing fine, Jake. We got we got to waste here. We got to, um, twenty minutes or more. So long. You're cool. Okay, okay. This reply I fixed. Pull up the state reply to uh, Avery's um, uh, motion. Mm -hmm. If I can find it Ooh. here. Status. No. Status. Status. No. Was Queso security cams outside recorded? That's what Millbilly wants to know. Well, that's a good question. I don't know that. And I, I you know. It says they had Hawkins watching evidence in the garage until they turned camera at garage. I mean, to me, they should, somebody should FOIA it. What the, what's the worst Nobody thing? Nobody was monitoring the monitor. <laughs> that sounds about like them, don't it? I mean, yeah, you're right there, Millbilly, I'm sure. I mean, what's the worst thing to FOIA that information and see if that we we'll see what kind of reply we get. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, this is a reply that you, um, a br uh, the reply from the the, the state uh, on his appeal. Yes, yeah, so on his on his motions that he filed. And this is okay. Fallon, this is Fallon and Gone that wrote this. Oh God. Uh, yeah. You see, so you can imagine that. Bastard. Okay. Yeah. As, as to claim one, the right to uh, con counsel, the right to confer in private. This is an issue that could have been raised in trial court or before trial. Trial counsel did not raise it. Further, it was not raised by an appellate counsel, but arguably it could have been, could have. Uh, this is re, uh, really a claim of ineffective uh, assistance of trial counsel. It would be barred by whatever the hell, Escalana Naranjo. Uh, however, it could also be involved a claim of ineffective assistance of appellate counsel. However, Avery uh, failed to allege deficient performance of appellate, uh, appellate counsel and has failed to demonstrate how he was prejudiced given a, the, the record made it in trial court. Monitored conversations. Now, this is the one claim that may require additional factual development before the court can rule. Um, I'm not going to get in. We can, you can, anybody can go pull this up and read it all. Yeah, we got, we got the, they're dropping the links for the Google Drive and everything yep. that you've seen that JJX has presented here, you can get at the, in the description box below. Right. Everything's I there. Placed in there. It's in that one folder. So, um, Basically, he's saying there may be something there. We need we need to we need to investigate. So let's pull up here to let me get the right place here. I want to get this kind of in right order. Page three. Okay. Um. Now what I'm going to pull up here is actually Judge Angela's. Uh, it's her decision. Like at this. Well, it, it, yeah. Okay, gotta, everybody, take a deep breath. Well, yeah, we got, we got to we got to go to this before we can go back and and get to the other. Okay, uh, and you see it. Um, in charging that the state violated his federal and state constitutional rights, to counsel. Uh, that's not it. Yeah, because of the serious allegations, uh, the court approves two attorneys have authorized expenditure to hire a private investigator. To further investigate defendants' claims, this is talking about the eavesdropping. Okay. And after more than a year of examination of the defendants' claims, Attorney Thomas Aquino reported back to the court. Uh, he's, he reports back extensive communications with trial counsel, interviews, investigator and jail officials, review of the trial transcripts, thousands of pages, investigative reports, and other discovery. So basically, she's saying, you know, they came to the court and she allowed, she allowed it to be investigated. So let's go look at Mr. Thomas Aquino. Let's uh, check him out. Yeah, let's check him out right quick. <laughs> we don't want that. I think his first one is no. No, that's too late. I hate the way these are numbered. They don't make anything easy. <laughs> I think this is it right here. Yeah, here we go. This is his first uh, status update. This is from this Thomas Aquino. Uh, hi, Judge. I would like to provide an update on the status of this matter. Kelly Met County Sheriff's Department responded to my public record request by providing me with the names of jail officials pre uh, present when they observed the defense counsel removing a video camera from his briefcase while conferring with Mr. Avery. However, the county refused to provide any contact information citing safety concerns. The county likewise refused to provide any information about the department's uh, ability to monitor or record the, the conference room. 
other than to say that the county did not have a written policy covering the matter. Well, that's a really great out. Well, you know, we may or may not record them, and we, if we do, we don't have a policy about it. What? That's what it says to me. Yeah, it does to me, too. In any event, I need additional time to locate and contact officials disclosed by the county. Uh, he, I don't know, for some reason, he contacted Dassey's council, but he's been unresponsive, not been responsive to my request for any police reports or search uh, warrant returns uh, after they related to the seizure of the family computer. As noted in my letter dated December 8th, 2014, Defense Council has informed me that the police officer seized the computer shortly after they discussed the possibility of searching the computer for evidence that may implicate another suspect. I need additional time to locate any such records or determine if they do not exist. So he's asking for more than for another 45 days. Of course, he copied that damn snake filing. So anyway, um, let's move on. Okay. Then, uh, he, uh, he, there's another update, another status update. And this one's on June 20th, July, uh, uh, July 20th, uh, 2015. So we're about two years after Avery first file uh dear judge uh suck my back the le the, the le this letter is confirmed that during the conferences and can y'all see that's pretty dim you see it okay linda uh let me see i can see i can see it i can read it so i'm big enough okay. yeah all right this letter is confirmed that during the conference call between the parties on court on july 17th it was agreed that by by august 17th i will file uh, either an amended um post-conviction motion or um, legal a letter no find support that I have determined that there is no merit to the eavesdropping post-conviction issue that Mr. Avery has raised. Okay, so let's move on. There's one more reply. Now, that actually, there might be two. Let's see if this is it. As you're aware, the court appointed me as well as uh, prior counsel to Mr. Avery's attorney a lot uh, concession. Mr. Avery's recorded conversations claim of pro se, Wisconsin, whatever, 974.06. Facts of developments before the court can rule. I write to report that after extensive uh, communications with trial counsel, having an investigator interview jail officials reviewing transcripts of six-week trial, hundreds if not thousands of pages of investigative reports and other discovery we'll get to that a little bit more of that in a minute i have not located any additional facts that would support the recorded conversations claim accordingly i request my uh, the, that the court withdraw my appearance to mr avery's counsel also suggest the court um uh, schedule a status conference with attorney fallon and mr avery to determine the next steps blah 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 copy to mr fallon again and then i think this is the last status update which is right here. I'm not going to get into the Avery responses because it just make this way too long. So this is the last one, it's dated September 2nd, 2015. Dear Judge, suck my back. <laughs> suck my back. <laughs> yeah. he, he, what he's doing here, he's, he's filing a petition for order of payment because um, he wants to get paid. And the petition is a forum petition found on Man of Arcs, uh, website. The petition includes a request for reimbursement of 315 bucks for investigative services, invest investigators, invoice closing closures, court approve up to 500 and such expenses, and the June 12th status conference. The total amount of fees requested is 3,206 bucks based on his time there. The number of hours expended as a reasonable in light of the vast scope of underlying proceedings and the nature of the issues considered on appeal. The, investigate, the investigation generated approximately 1,500 pages of police reports. Mm. Really? Hmm. Where, what 1,500 pages of police reports? Uh, where are they? That's exactly right, because Queso was 1,117 pages, I think. 15, and there's, how many are they saying there are? 1,500 1500. Pages. So there's 1,500 pages of police reports. And a 24 I, days before. Uh, well, I got the 24 days. We got that. We've got the trial transcript. I'm okay with that. But what are these? Is he talking about just his own investigation? It says 1,500 pages of police reports. I don't know what to make out of that. There's 1,120 pages approximately of queso. 
Hmm, maybe somebody should dig into this. There's 22 pages of the Manitowoc County summary. Now, I'm not, there may not be anything here. I just saw that, and I read it the second time. I'm like, wait, what? That's what? kind of that's kind of strange. I mean, well, I think it's pages of police reports. I mean, there may be records that I'm not including in my math here. I just I don't know what they are, but I think it may be hmm. worth following. I, hey I don't guys, know. something to check it out. Yep. So let's move on. What's my next step here? Uh, basically, of course, you know that uh, uh, Judge uh, Judge Angela ruled against him. Uh, he didn't uh, obviously. It didn't go anywhere. He got he got right. shut. Down. He got shut down again. I'm right. not going to open that book and back up and and read through it. But uh, so let's uh, let's do this here. Uh, let's see where am I at, Linda? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can. Got it. I, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing that one whenever you're. Okay. Ready. We'll stop there that we one. Go. Okay. So we got one more thing to show, and um, this uh, we got a few months ago, which drives home everything that I've been talking about, and I think it's, I mean, for me, I mean, I know how I'd feel if I was, you know, a defendant, um, and I saw this, I would be really upset based on what john byrne said right yeah so let me see if i can pull this up here and then uh, i'm starting this let's see uh chrome tab yeah here we go this video is starting about halfway through where it's at we don't have to watch it all we'll watch a little bit of it but the the important part is really where it starts which is i got it time time stamp so here we go i'm going to share it now, right ahead. and you can there you go there we go and there we go so as everybody knows this is yeah now <laughs> this is the this is one of the contact rooms right yeah where there's not supposed to be any cameras at no. all jeez I, and I, this I, is him with the video camera Yes. There you go, guys. It's it, so the guy testifies that there's no cameras at all anywhere in these kind of rooms. So he purges himself. He lied straight up. These guys yeah, are it, doing this. It's Look, you can't. It's interesting that Kratz made this video and released it. Uh, basically, it's calling Brendan the sacrificial lamb. And yeah, every, I see everybody, that. Everybody that's involved that he's showing in this video sacrifice brendan what 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 kind of yeah. narcissist does that kind of thing man yep no kidding i oh i'm telling you <sighs> um, i am I, I i look at the way the camera is that's what i'm saying when you look down at it it's hidden you know it's got to be i don't know i just know that pete oh we didn't read that part about pete Bayats. He says, furthermore, in that letter that he wrote, that he looked around the room. He didn't see a camera. But, again, would he? Would he have seen it? I doubt it. I doubt it. Because that looks pretty hidden. It looks kind of secretive, you know? The corner up. Like, look at it. You know, there's something. It's like it's in the ceiling, even. Because that, it just is, I don't know. It just looks Almost funny. Almost like it's up on the edge of a, maybe a lot fixture yeah. that's. Yeah, I'm trying know. to look at the other side of the door to see what it could be, but it might be those drop ceilings because isn't that what they had? Yep. Yep. And here comes Brendan right here. Yes. I don't want to play too much of this and get people talked off. Yeah. 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 yeah Brendan. So we, yeah. should we stop s yep. sharing? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, okay. let's, let's stop there. Okay. That, that is really good stuff. Jax, I think I, I, I'm, I'm, I didn't read, I've never heard like the details of any of that stuff, but ever since Kratz put that out, you know, it's always kind of like, you're not supposed to be recording in there. Well, then I see Buting having his camera, you know, but then I heard the phone calls and I know that the producers asked him if he could bring one in and I don't know, that's a total, um, Violation of his rights. Well, right. I mean, but John Burns said there no, there, there's no cameras in there, and he would know. He's been okay. there for 40. It says, I'm trying to get some of these 
comments. Um, oh, yep, yep. He must also have the tape that was in Butin's camera too, if they screen in screen what was on Butin's camera. That would be my guess. I, I don't really know where that came from because that's that's directly from those. They're cameras. called hidden cameras. You got that right. Well, I and mean, she's shady in the corner, yeah, top corner. So it looks like it's up there. Ceiling panel. T um, T1 says, "Oh, camera in a smoke in a smoke detector." Yeah. Lip readers. Let me tell you something. I'm a lip reader. I can read lips because my dad could not speak for almost a year. So I learned to, to do it. So yeah, right, right, uh, right, I haven't right. done it in a while, but I definitely can do it. So if I look in a crowd, I can tell what people are saying. Sometimes Rachel you Knapp, don't want to know. <laughs> Rachel Knapp's scene says audio. My guess is that, that there is audio. I'm guessing. I don't know that. And it's been stripped away. Kratz is the, yeah. one, that, Kratz is the one that released uh, this portion. And from what he said on Twitter before he deleted his account was that he foiled him. That's what they he said. They have many videos of him. Kim Monster says, "Yeah, and, you know." And, and I think Kratz, he just he really screwed up. You know what I mean? <laughs> he screwed up. Well, I mean, if you foiled him, then uh, hey, let's just write a few of our own. Well, we got a lot of people here that are not afraid to write a FOIA. That's right. And if you don't know how, Henberry, who's going to be my guest tomorrow. Yep. First thing at 10 o'clock. So make sure you join in for Henry because you know he's good. He's as good as Jax and Gene. Better than I am. That guy's smart as hell. Uh, oh, he's good. He's he's know your Rav, um, know your FOIA. I mean, and he's kind of, well, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to leave it at that. You want to tune in for tomorrow when Henberry's in here. And then I have also. I do not want to miss tomorrow with Henberry. Do right, not want to miss it. Do not miss it. It's going to be good. Yes, I do is. know that. And um, and kind of new to me anyway is O-Dog. Um, yes. One, two, three. Yes. He's new to me, but he's the one that just foiled all the newest pictures that we just received. Yep. So don't want to miss um, that either. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we've got some people here, so I am going to give them their. Do we have any more questions before we? Before I walk yeah, out let me here? let me. You know, um, let me see, Jax. Um, probably, dude. Oh, they probably have microphones, but oh, it jumps so fast. But built into table table legs. Hey, that's a good one. Not really a shock, Rachel says. You know what? It, nothing shocks me anymore I, unless you say that you really got somebody who's for real, for real, the killer, and they admitted it. I would be shocked at that. Isn't that embarrassing? Someone, that Isn't that embarrassing? Gender says someone needs to uh, su submit a FOIA to see what KK FOIA'd. Because he you, is the one that told us you he can, did that. You can do that. You know you can do that, right? That's right. I see a baby. I see you, Sammy. We're all going to come on. Let them in. Right, let, Jax, him, thank let, you. let them in here. Let them in. No, here. I love you. Thank you so much for your time and great. I hope, everybody, I, I hope everyone appreciated it. And those, oh, those, yeah. Those that didn't know, I hope they, you know, you got a little something out of it. Yeah. I'm glad to do it, but I just piqued my curiosity. And I thought, hey, some of the new people may not know about this. Let's get it. Definitely up not. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Really yeah. was. Thank you so much. You bet. All right. I'm out. You out.